So don't call her. If I don't call her, I won't hear the end of it from my parents. So call her. How can I call her? You know I can't talk to women. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 dark truths about Big Bang Theory. Happy kitty, sleepy kitty. What are you trying to pull, Mom? From the top. For this list, we'll be going behind the scenes of the Big Bang Theory and diving into some reported facts about the characters, the actors, and even the show itself. What do you think about these dark truths? Leave us a comment below. Number 10. Leonard's glasses have no lenses Leonard's poor eyesight and need for glasses is an oft-discussed and referenced aspect of his character. I'm blind here, guys. Can you help me find them? Sorry. Okay. Them. But did you ever notice that whenever you saw Johnny Galecki in photos, away from the Big Bang Theory set, he was never wearing glasses? And no, he doesn't wear contacts. The actor just has good eyesight. Galecki wanted Leonard to wear glasses though, and so he wore a pair with plain glass lenses during the initial rehearsals for the pilot episode. I have a very wide circle. <laughs> I have 212 friends on MySpace. <laughs> yes, and you've never met one of them. That's the beauty of it. The problem was that his height difference with Jim Parsons meant that he was looking up quite a bit, and this caused a glare from the set lights that didn't work well on camera. You had time to make a label for everything in this apartment, including the label maker, but you didn't have 10 seconds to make one that said urine cup? <laughs> it's right here on the bottom. So Galecki just popped out the lenses, and that was that. Number 9. Amy and Sheldon's first kiss wasn't very hygienic. Many fans fondly remember Amy and Sheldon's first kiss on the train on Valentine's Day as one of the most romantic and cheer-worthy moments of the show's 12 seasons. What's next? Oh, kissing's romantic. <laughs> Whether or not they still will when they hear about what was going on behind the scenes that day is up for debate, however. That was nice. Good. And what was going on was that Jim Parsons was sick as a dog. As Maya Bialik reminded him during an interview the two did with USA Today, you were sweating, you had a fever, you were very sick. He was sick and she was gargling with hydrogen peroxide between takes. How romantic does it sound now? Conductor said, if I come back to the engine room, he'd show me how to bring the train through a crossing. Okay, have fun. Number eight, Raj's issues with women are based on a real person. Okay, maybe not all his lady problems, but one very specific one. One of the defining parts of Raj's character for the first few seasons is his inability to talk to most women. Do you speak English? Oh, he speaks English, he just can't speak to women. <laughs> really? Why? He's kind of a nerd. This selective mutism is, as even Leonard's mother points out, quite rare, but it was also familiar to one of the show's creators, Bill Prady. Howard lives with his mother and Raj can't speak to women unless he's drunk. Go. <laughs> oh, that's fascinating. Selective mutism is quite rare. They always tell writers to write what you know, and Prady had an old friend with that exact affliction, so he brought it to Raj. Prady's old friend eventually got over the mutism, got hitched, and had children. And while Raj also eventually got past his disorder, that's where the similarities ended, as Raj never got the marriage and family he so desperately wanted. Stay here with the people who love you. But what if this is my last chance at marriage and family? Number seven, Kaylee Cuoco almost had to have her foot amputated. Remember in season four when Penny went from being a waitress to a bartender at the Cheesecake Factory? I have troubles, Penny. <laughs> Come to pour them out to the sympathetic ear of the local barkeep. You know, they have a really nice bar over at the Olive Garden. Turns out that change of position wasn't in the cards when the season began. Instead, it was a solution the team came up with after actress Kaylee Cuoco had a major horse riding accident, spent two weeks in the hospital, and emerged with her leg in a cast. That was actually the best possible outcome, given that doctors had told her that she might come out of surgery with only one foot. Doctor comes in, doesn't introduce himself, he says, okay, gotta go over your options. One of them is amputation. That's the first thing he says And to all you. I'm thinking is, I'm gonna have to call work and tell them I have one foot. And speaking of Big Bang injuries, prior to filming season six, Maya Bialik injured her hand in a car accident. Someone made a turn in front of me, an illegal turn in front of me, and, uh, and our, our cars collided, so 
My, my hand got the brunt of it, but thank God I'm okay. But rather than write it into the story, producers made sure that they filmed around it instead. Number six, Jim Parsons had never heard of Chuck Lorre. Chuck Lorre had created and produced multiple hit sitcoms before The Big Bang Theory, from Grace Under Fire to Two and a Half Men. He's bluffing. He always pulls his ear and he bluffs. <laughs> By the mighty mouse, you win. Take him down. His was a name that pretty much everyone in the business knew. Except Parsons, that is. When his agent called him to tell him about a Chuck Lorre project, Parsons thought he was talking about Chuck Woolery. He didn't get why people were getting so hyped up about a sitcom from the guy who hosted Love Connection in the 80s. Time, so we're going to find out everything that happened on Wanda's Day tomorrow. That's our show for today. We'll be back tomorrow with Wanda and more singles trying to make a love connection. Until then, I'm Chuck Woolery, and I hope all your dates are good. Thankfully, he didn't let that stop him from auditioning and ultimately doing the show. You offer soup and a half sandwich? Yes. Where exactly does the half sandwich come from? Are you giving me half of someone else's sandwich? Or do I have to wait for someone else in the restaurant to order the other half? Number five, Kevin Sussman is scared of water. In the season 10 episode, The Hot Tub Contamination, Stuart and Raj, thinking that Howard and Bernadette are away on vacation, both show up separately at the Wallowitz's house to use their hot tub. When Raj arrives, a panicked Stuart hides under the water in the hopes of not getting caught. And when he pops up, the fear on both their faces gets a big laugh. <laughs> However, the fear on Stewart's face wasn't acting. As actor Kevin Sussman told the crowd at Comic-Con in 2017, he has a water phobia. So, submerging himself in the hot tub was a horrifying and disgusting experience. It's, it's less of a swim, more of a survival struggle. <laughs> so just having to have my head under water and... Yeah, it, was, it was horrifying it was, fun, it was funny. It was also one that required a lot of help from the other people on set to accomplish. The last couple of months, I come here when I know they're not home. What? They heard me in the bushes once, but they thought it was a raccoon. <laughs> I told you raccoons don't say uh-oh. Number four, pay scale. We couldn't imagine the Big Bang Theory without Raj and Howard, but apparently the producers could have. Hang out, maybe go on a quest. That uh, sounds interesting. So you'll think about it? Oh, I don't think I'll be able to stop thinking about it. <laughs> Smooth. When the show began, Jim Parsons, Kaylee Cuoco, and Johnny Galecki were each making up to $60,000 per episode. That number rose over time, and as season 8 came rolling around, they renewed for $1 million. Simon Helberg and Kunal Nayar were looking for equal pay with their co-stars, but when producers warned that their characters would be written off the sitcom, the actors settled for a number more in the mid-six-figure range, eventually getting bumped to $1 million a couple years later. My friend, I want you to be happy. Thanks. Oh, Sheldon, since Amy's out of town, would you like to join us? I want you to be happy too but not enough to do anything about it. As for Mayim Bialik and Melissa Rauch, they got bumped up to $500,000 in season 10 when the others all willingly took a $100,000 pay cut. Cool! You be cool! Guys are hitting on us and not just to get to Penny! <laughs> You're right. Thank you! Number three, Soft Kitty Copyright. Soft kitty, warm kitty. Little ball of fur. <laughs> soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball of litigation. Although the show's popular soft kitty song was used to make characters of the show feel better, hearing it sung season after season didn't make poet Edith Newlin's airs feel good at all. So they tried suing the show in an effort to ease their discomfort, claiming that their mother wrote the words to the song many decades ago and that they held the copyright. Soft kitty, warm kitty, little ball. Mrs. Cooper, were we supposed to take that pie out of the oven? Get out! Unfortunately for them, the case was dismissed when a judge ruled they didn't prove their copyright claims. And that wasn't the only musical lawsuit either. In 2015, Stephen Page, former member of the Bare Naked Ladies, sued the band, claiming he was owed royalties for the Big Bang Theory's theme song on which he performs. Music and mythology, Einstein and astrology, it all started with the Big Bang. Number two, Secret Romance. For two seasons, Big Bang Theory fans watched and waited for Leonard and Penny to finally get together. 
Leonard, you're back. Yeah, I just stopped by to say... <laughs> Yeah, so hi. hi. But little did they know that while on screen things were moving slowly, behind the scenes, Kaylee Cuoco and Johnny Galecki were in a loving relationship. Yes, they denied it and kept it secret, but the couple dated for two years while Leonard and Penny remained just friends. Ironically, Cuoco and Galecki broke up just as Penny and Leonard were finally getting together in season three. I couldn't think of anyone else while you were gone. Mm, me neither. <laughs> Except for one night when the heat went out. <laughs> Long stories, don't ask. And speaking of Galecki dating co-stars, Johnny also dated his on-screen love interest, Sarah Gilbert, back at when they were both on Roseanne in the 90s. You are now married. Ah, I can't believe you bought that whole pregnancy thing. <laughs> broke up, at least partly, because Gilbert came to recognize her attraction to women. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Writer's Strike it turns out Raj drinking a grasshopper and talking to Penny for the first time could have been the last episode of the show. Ever since I was a little boy, my father wanted me to be a gynecologist like him. How can I be a gynecologist? I can barely look a woman in the eye. You see, the Big Bang Theory had only aired eight episodes when the 2007 strike by the Writers Guild of America shut down production, and their ratings weren't blowing anyone away. The show wasn't a guaranteed renewal before the strike, and after it, many involved thought, as Johnny Galecki did, oh, that's the nail in the coffin. I'm gonna tie on to life. Life has a way of amusing us, blessing and bruising us, drinking the Kayum to life. But there was a silver lining to the dark cloud of the writer's strike. Because of it, CBS reran those eight episodes over and over again, which actually helped to build an audience for the show. And with that mystery unraveled, the rest is history. Math, science, history, unraveling the mystery that all started with a big bang. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.